Good morning, Patriots, and welcome to this edition of The Last Jacobite. When you take a stance like mine, you do it with your eyes wide open. You do it knowing the sort of things that are going to be said about you on forums. And in this virtual one-party state that we have in Scotland, if you dare to criticise anything the Scottish Government does, well, you know, you've got to be prepared to take the flak, and I am. That's why I do these blogs. It's because I'm a patriot. It's because I love Scotland, and it's because I want nothing more than Scottish independence. But the great thing about having a Facebook page, of course, is the ability for anyone to scroll back in time and see what the last Jacobite was saying before the referendum and before the general election. So this morning, let's just briefly revisit those times. You'll recall those heady days just before the referendum. The Yes camp was in the ascendancy, so much so that in panic, Westminster had to send up the three amigos to promise the vow. Things were on the turn. Independence seemed to be just around the corner. So with great hope and expectation, we tuned in the evening of the referendum vote. And I remember switching on the television. And the first thing that I saw was Ruth Davidson's face grinning like a Cheshire cat. At that moment, I knew we'd lost. But then she was asked why she looked so pleased. And she said this. She said, we have sampled the postal votes, so I know we have won. That's a matter of public record. It was broadcast on the BBC. At the time, I and many other folks I know thought, that can't be right. Surely, that's, is that even legal? I don't know. I don't know. We waited for our politicians to say something, to protest, but not a word was heard. And in the days and the weeks that followed, we heard about all the irregularities. We heard about the tragic death of the van driver in Inverness. We heard about the shenanigans during fire alarms. We saw the piles of apparent yes votes on no tables and we questioned. And yet, none of our politicians said a word. Then sometime in that, we started to hear this vague plan B thing from the SNP. It was, keep the heed, be quiet, there's a plan B. So we, like many other patriots, said, OK. And we saw the general election as a chance to right the wrong of the referendum. Those of us who were old enough remembered the words of that monster Margaret Thatcher, who said, and this is in public record, Scotland does not need a referendum to gain independence. All Scotland ever needs to do is to vote for a majority of nationalist MPs at a general election and de facto Scotland would be independent. Well, you can scroll back through my page and you'll see that nobody, nobody was more of an avid supporter of the SNP than I was. But there's more. 
when, before the general election, the best politicos, the best statisticians, and the best pundits in the SNP, well, they were projecting probably, hopefully, about 35 MPs. I wasn't. You can go back, you can see where I predicted that there would be over 50. In fact, at one point, I thought it might well have been a clean sweep, and probably it should have been. And so we hoped, didn't we? Those of us who remembered the past, those of us who remembered the words of Margaret Thatcher, remembered when Robin Cook, when Robin Cook, with much fewer MPs, very almost declared independence to protect Scotland from the Tory rule during Thatcher's time. And we hoped, we thought, here we go. 56 out of 59, surely that proves that the referendum was flawed at best. And yet our politicians said nothing. Now there have been patriots tirelessly digging away. And late last night, I received information which I find absolutely shocking. And this is confirmed information. Now I'm not going to allege any wrongdoing. I'm not going to break any law in that way. I'm simply now going to give you some facts. Provable facts. Verifiable facts. The company that the SMP Scottish Government chose to run the referendum was a company named IDOX. I D O X. The company's still in existence. It's a registered company in Northern Ireland. The registration is public record. At the time of the referendum, that company was owned by Peter Lilly, MP of the Conservative Party. Let that sink in. Now, shortly after the referendum, Mr. Lilly transferred those stocks to his wife. Now, I, I'm no lawyer, I don't know. Is there any wrongdoing in any of that? Possibly legally not. But, curious is it not? Curious. That an SNP Scottish government out of all the companies in the world who could have run the referendum, chose to use a company that was owned by a Conservative MP. I know that the Unionists want folk like me to go away, to be quiet. I know that the SNP sees me as a fly in the ointment. I don't care. I believe in truth and in justice and in freedom. Now, be aware of this. If there was any wrongdoing, it will be found out. But I ask you patriots, even if there was no wrongdoing, should the SMP Scottish Government not have at least found a company without such close links 
to a Conservative MP to run the referendum. If there's a smoking gun in this, it will be in the postal votes. It will be in the fact that places like Edinburgh returned far more postal votes than would normally be the case. I don't know. I know that there are folks looking into this. And I'll be here every step of the way, no matter what jibes, no matter what insults, no matter what abuse the last Jacobite receives. Until Scotland stands free and tall and independent in this crazy world in which we live. Thank you for watching The Last Jacobite. Please like the page and subscribe to the channel. Soralba, Gibrath.